Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is January 29th, 2021. Time is 3.42 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I am joined today by Sunday, the cat, who is relaxing after a nice, long, unmonitored session with her catnip banana. And boy, is she just so happy! So happy! Oh. <laughs> and chat. Today we're going to talk about, <laughs> today we're going to follow up exclusively, I have no other news, exclusively on what's happening with stonks um, and crypto, right? But stonks, okay? Uh, so first, if you missed last week's episode, which some of y'all did, go back and watch the first, like, I think 20 minutes or whatever. Because we're going to pick up where that left off. Okay. So that way I'm not repeating everything a million times. I'm going to go over a couple basic concepts. Very basic concepts. For those of you guys too stubborn to go back and watch. But we are going to pick it up with our friend Andrew Left. Who says... Hi everyone, it's Andrew Left at Citron Research. 20 years ago, I started Citron with the intention of protecting the individual against Wall Street, against the frauds and the stock promotions that were just all over. When I started it, everyone used to say, can you just write whatever you want to write online and not be a registered brokerage firm and not be Merrill Lynch at the time? I said, sure. It's freedom of speech in this country. And if I'm telling the truth, I'm just going to write it. And for the first 15 years of existence, not CNBC or the Wall Street Journal even wanted to note the fact that we existed. Even the fact while we uncovered more fraud than any non-governmental agency out there, we helped bring down the drug pricing in this country against the better interest of the hedge funds. And we're proud of the work that we've done. But now, after 20 years, we noticed something. Where we started Citron was to be against the establishment. We've actually become the establishment. And we've done this whole thing without ever hiding from lawsuits, without ever hiding behind a pseudonym. But it's completely now lost its focus. So as of today, Citron Research will no longer be publishing what can be considered as short selling reports. So Andrew Left is pivoting Citron Research, which was the number one initial target that Wall Street Bets was going after. Because they were the ones that were they short reports, they were shorting the market. Uh, and so now they're saying, he's saying that they're pivoting. I don't know if I trust <laughs> that he means this. <laughs> There's been a lot of insane tactics that we've never, ever, ever seen that we're going to talk about today. Um that the market or that people invested in the market have been doing not like small investors, like regular people. I mean, like hedge funds, firms, all the brokers, like they've been pulling some shit that we've never even thought was possible in order to try to get us to pull out, Tr to get us. To, we're not going to pull out. We're staying in. We'll make babies. Sorry, <laughs> but it's, but we're not stopping now. He knew how this would fly. No comments, no uh, no rating. He knew. He knew how this would fly. Michael, Michael. <laughs> the top comment, though, was just genius. Just absolute fucking genius. Citron, sit and spin. Man. So, one down. But probably not. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go and pivot. We're gonna try starting from now on, and then later it's like, yo, people really demanded that we get more shorts. It's just like a fucking blogger, man. Just like a regular YouTuber. It's like, oh, I'm gonna try this new thing. People are gonna be, then come back later and and and, and uh, spin up the same old shit. Uh, I'm doing this not for the money, doing it for the memes. So don't know how to pull That's why I have a daughter. See, there you go. You should be happy about that. So I took a. There's been so many, what is a short, what is short selling? What is all that stuff, right? What is happening with the market? There's so many different ways that I've seen that people try to put it. Imagine that there's this and imagine that there's this and imagine what, uh, da, 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 da. so I wrote something up that I feel a lot of you guys would understand. 
I try to write in language that I feel a lot of us would understand, okay? So, I am Wall Street Bets, level 60 rogue, and I borrowed a WoW token from my GM, but I have to give it back on the 29th or I have to start paying interest. So, I sold the token for 100,000 gold thinking I can buy it back for 50,000 before the 29th. I thought for sure I got this. I'm gonna make some money that way, right? Pocket the interest or pocket the margin and then the guy gets his money back. Today, I'm oh, sorry, someone bought all the tokens and now <laughs> I can only buy one back at a million golds, way higher than I expected. Today is the 29th and I don't have a million gold. The more time that passes, the more interest I pay until I get that token back. There's more. That's the basic, that's the basic setup, okay? That's the way it should work. But the brokers, the GM sold more, the, the, the person sold more somehow than actually existed in the universe. Oh, sorry, son. Am I ruining this for you? So you have more that's owed than what actually exists. And now you have this problem where they're paying interest on shit that just doesn't exist. She's leaving. Bring her back. I'm sorry. Do we get it now? Do we understand? Okay, we're good. I know she's been. You're too much. You're too much. Harsh in her buzz. <laughs> so that's what's happening. Okay. They're paying interest so long as they can't buy that stock back. But those someones is Wall Street Bets and everybody else involved. Not just Wall Street Bets. Everybody else has now gotten involved. It's become a fucking movement. And those people are saying, I don't have to sell. You cannot make me sell. I'm going to hold. And eventually, they'll have to get, they'll get to the point where they'll decide, well, I could keep paying interest on something. I don't. I can't close out. Or... It would be more financially sound if I were to just buy the damn stock at the price that it's demanded of me. And when that happens, then the cost is going to go up because they're talking like millions of stock that they're going to be buying. Not like a hundred stock here and there. Millions. And so the stock price is going to start moving up. One of the mantras I've seen in Wall Street Bets, it says, we can remain autistic longer than they can remain solvent. Now, if you're not familiar with, with Wall Street Bets, they are very self-deprecating. They like to refer to themselves as retards and autistics. I would never call somebody else that. That is just what they call themselves, okay? That's how they want to identify? Fine. <laughs> so it says, they can, they can remain for as long as they can, longer than, than uh, these uh, brokers and firms can remain solvent. <sighs> so in comes deep fucking value. Deep fucking value has his own mantra. He says, what's an exit strategy? Deep fucking value <laughs> started oh, well over a year ago investing into GameStop. He just basically had a hunch. He was firm that he knew. He was like, no, this is going to go somewhere. And so he started buying up stock. He ended up accumulating 50,000 shares uh, for pennies compared to what he has now. Now, I'm going to pull up his actual current. This is, this is as of just a couple hours ago. <clears throat> and it says, and here you can see that he's sitting on, and this has gone up and down. Right. But now he's sitting on a total forty six million dollars. Forty six million dollars. Fifty thousand fifty thousand shares quantity. Quantity shares. And he still has not pulled out. Like I said, these guys are making babies. They're not pulling out. It's just not happening. Needs more echo on that number. <laughs> Fifty million dollars. That's what I want. <laughs> Wrong effects. 
That was my Krogan effect. Uh, it's close enough. Uh, that's assuming somebody would buy his shares. Yes. So he would have to, I mean, he'd have to sell his shares, but 50,000 is still not a lot. Like 50,000, like we're talking like, I don't know how many shares are actually available with, with, uh, uh through GameStop. Um, I should have got that number, but, uh, but it, but 50,000 is still a drop in the bucket. So even if he sold, like it's not going to go up 50 million Krogan, it's not going to go up as much as you would expect if a firm were to close out. So he has been doing this for, he's, he was one of the reasons he started posting these like monthly updates. And he got to the point to where people started getting on board. They're like, you're really dumb, but you know what? I'm going to go and throw down some money just to see what happens. And then they started, then all this peripheral stuff started happening where they realized it's like, okay, these guys are shorting the market. People like Andrew left at Citron Research. They're shorting the market, betting that game that GameStop is going to fail and they're profiting off of it. While at the same time, because they're selling more or they're, they're because they are selling more than actually exists, they're like artificially making it look like the company is failing faster than it actually is. That's one of the big problems with reasons why we're going to talk about it soon. Everybody's getting involved now. <clears throat> Look, either I'm making tens of thousands or I lose 2.5 thousand. I don't have much to lose, but a lot to gain. That's right. So, all week, Game Stock 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 Stocks. <laughs> Game Stop Stock. Game Stocks have been going up all week. It closed out at 60, I believe, last week. We covered. Closed out at 60 and skyrocketed up and down. Through like it was a hundred something, two hundred something, three hundred something. It got up to like four hundred and eighty, I think, maybe five twelve. Um, there's screenshots floating around out there. It was like four twenty point sixty nine. There's uh, there's actually a, there was a thread uh, where somebody saw how many uh, how many people put like an actual call, like basically a limit where they're gonna sell at a certain number, and that number was four twenty sixty nine. It was just like it was like you know X number for like uh, like you know single digits, double digits for like these prices, and then four twenty sixty nine. It was like twelve thousand orders. <laughs> And it was like, no, you dumbasses, you gotta, you gotta stay, you gotta stay. And it ended up closing today. <clears throat> it ended up closing today, and we'll say it again. But it ended up closing today at three twenty-five. Uh, it's moving. There's after our aftermarket movements, but that's what it closed. Um, that's what it closed at by the end of the day. Uh, and that's huge. That's huge. It, it closed at one ninety something yesterday, I believe. But why did it dip? We're going to talk about it. I have the screenshot. Doesn't matter. Shut up, guns. <laughs> stop trying to stop trying to actually me. I got the screenshot, son. Um, but you know, it give or take. It dove right after for like five bucks and then it came back. So uh see. So <clears throat> while this was happening, while this was happening, Melvin Capital, who is a, another hedge fund that's targeted in this whole debacle, um, they claimed. They said that uh, they have closed out their position at GameStop. So what does that mean? They closed that position. So it means that they have sold or they bought <laughs> their shares and closed out the position. But people on on Wall Street bets, they're not dumb. They like to call themselves dumb, but they're not dumb. They know that... Uh, the price did not move enough to justify the millions of shares that would have moved. So it says here, uh, hedge fund targeted by Reddit board M Melvin Capital closed out GameStop short position Tuesday. And this is according to their hedge fund manager. But in another article, let me go and make this darker. Jesus Christ, man, these guys, hell. In another article... It says, and this is a quote, it says, uh, uh, Melvin Capital, founded in 2014 by Gabriel Plotkin, and this is from the article here, uh, it said it does not comment on positions and trading. So they don't comment on positions and trading, but their hedge fund manager says they closed out the position. But the price does not reflect that they changed, out, they changed their position at all. So it looks to me like they just want to say it the same way that everybody's trying to punk all of these small investors into cashing out. Oh, well, we're not in it anymore, so you guys could go ahead and leave. Well, you won. See you later. With all that. But they didn't fall for it. And even in the thread, even in the damn thread, people are just like, ah, nah, nah, nah. 
I don't believe you. There's uh, still a ton of shorts on the books. Yeah, and they can see that stuff. They can see it. There's a ton of shorts on the books. Uh, but also, at the same time, like, if, if they close out the position, so, so just so you know, CNBC is now running ads that claim Melvin closed out his short position. Why would you spend money to convince the public that Melvin closed its short position? If it's closed, good for them. Why are they running ads? <laughs> They're trying so hard. CNBC and all these. Yeah, CNBC has been nuts. They have. They have absolutely been nuts. Thanks, Becky. I love that. Becky. <laughs> fucking Becky stock. Uh, <laughs> they were new short sellers on the market hoping for the bubble to burst. So <clears throat> there's, there's a connection between nobody believes this, right? And it's, it's clear because the market hasn't moved. Like the fact that everybody held all through Friday through the end of today means that they didn't move. And yes, there will always be some shorts because there's money to be made on that. The point is to hold until they pay so much interest that they end up closing out positions, like actually closing out positions, not closing out positions, actually close out the positions, forcing the price to go up. And then everyone's got diamond hands. So, <clears throat> this observation was made a number of times across a number of different uh, sites and uh, different people. Uh, and it says, Citadel is an investor in Melvin Capital, which got run over by Wall Street Bets. Citadel is also Robinhood's biggest customer. Citadel invested $2.75 billion this week in Melvin Capital. Isn't that attempt at market manipulation? Yeah. It's true. That, and there's a lot more. <laughs> it looks like it from their end. It looks like it, but they don't disclose whether or not they should. So maybe they just throw that one hedge manager under the bus. What I forgot to check. Does Citadel have any associated with Apex Clearinghouse? I don't know. I don't know. It yeah, definitely goes deeper. <laughs> Dogecoin was a distraction all along. We can multitask Wall Street. That's right. We can multitask. So nothing is working. We're buying more. We're buying more. Nothing is working. They can't stop. They can't can't stop. Won't stop. Game stop. Okay. Nothing is working. They're lying to our faces. Still buy. Still hold. Who cares? <clears throat> Robin Hood decides. They make a call saying that in light of market volatility, we are restricting transactions for certain securities to position closing own to closing only, including AMC and GME. Read more here. This is a big deal because they stopped people from being able to buy, but you can still sell. <clears throat> so everyone flips out. And I do mean like everyone. I only have a handful of tweets here. This is how we communicate. Come on, tweets. AOC chimes in. She says, this is unacceptable. We, ne we now need to know more about Robinhood App's decision to block retail investors from purchasing stock while hedge funds are freely able to trade stock as they see fit. As a member of the Financial Services Committee, I'd support a hearing if necessary. The price did indeed drop. It did indeed drop. <clears throat> a lot. It dropped like 100 and something. Uh, but then it started going back up because, and I don't have this thread, but because... People internationally figured that figured out that they could still buy on the U.S. market, and they don't have the limits through the apps that they work through. So they start buying. So now, like, the, the, so now the price is, is going back up again <laughs> because we have international support trying to crash our market. <laughs> so even, I mean, just to keep going, like even. Donald Trump Jr. said it took less than a day for big tech, big government, and the corporate media to spring into action and begin colluding to protect their hedge fund buddies on Wall Street. This is what a rigged system looks like, folks. Like, this is when AOC and Donald Trump Jr. are on the same side, you know you fucked up, Robin Hood. You see uh, Robin Hood CEO's tweets get ratioed? Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. <clears throat> even. Even Ja Rule. Even Ja Rule. To the time like this, nigga, this is ridiculous. Stop. Who gives a fuck what Ja Rule thinks at a time like this, nigga? This is ridiculous. Even Ja Rule chimes in. Everybody, like everybody got in because it's like this is unheard of. Unheard of to just block somebody from blocking like tons of people from purchasing 
but leaving the cell open. So this became... See, that was Thursday. I think some international brokers were forced to stop trades in U.S. stock today because the company that processed the trades told them no. Mm -hmm. <sighs> is it, is, isn't, is it Robert owned by hedge funds? Yeah, we're, gonna, we're, we're, we're getting there. <clears throat> is it a fire festival scam, dude? <laughs> um, so a lot of people consider this basically like an act of war, right? So this guy says, kudos to Big Finance for starting a war with a generation of brilliance raised on tablets and cup of noodles. These kids can take your punches. They've watched their parents suffer them for years. They won't bend. You have left. They won't bend. You have left them no room. This is on you now. This sentiment and, and others <clears throat> like, here we go. This one, which you guys probably have seen, uh, is from 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 Wall Street Bets, and somebody's basically saying you're tell you're trying to scare us into selling it won't work. Let me explain why. Since I grew up poor, I grew up on the poor side of town. I remember my parents struggling with money for years. Shitty cars, shitty clothes. Never owned any video game consoles because their parents not only my parents not approve of them, they couldn't afford them. Ramen was a staple at home. I still eat it to this day. Pro tip: you can have a future. Da da da. So he says I've been broke my entire life. I've never had more than nine thousand dollars liquid at any time. I've been nearly homeless too many times. Account. I'm an expert at thrift store shopping. He said he worked a ton of jobs. Like he's used to being broke. And then he says, if you think the prospect of losing a few hundred dollars I have in GME is going to scare me into selling before Friday, you couldn't be more wrong. When you only ever average like a thousand dollars in your checking account, what's the difference in one hundred dollars or ten dollars? Do you have any idea how many times I've been there before? You know what I you know what I do when I'm completely fucking broke? I literally shrug my shoulders and play some video games or music until my next paycheck. And I'll do it again. So this is these are these are people who are this is personal for them this is this is not this is evolved where it's not just about citron research it's not just about you know short sellers in general this has become <clears throat> this has become a much more personal thing for some folks personal vendetta for a lot of folks and they're gonna they're probably gonna see this out just like he says it's like you know i'm used to being broke <laughs> like, and if I get, to, if, if I just have to be broke for a while, uh, maybe continuously, but you also get to be broke like you too. <clears throat> this is the kind of shit that they are, that they want to see burn, basically. The reason the market is doing what it's doing is people are sitting at home getting the checks from the government, okay? And this fair share is a bullshit concept. It's just a way of attacking wealthy people. And, you know, I think it's inappropriate. We all got to work together and pull together. The re you think this is bullshit? These people sitting at home getting their checks. <sighs> attacking wealthy people. <sighs> oh, my God. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This man watched too much Hunger Games, dude. <clears throat> How dare we attack wealthy people? We all got to work together with the rich. Exactly. So full of shit. Exactly. So in all of this, Robinhood blocks buying. Um, a number of other, like I don't want, it's not just them, another, a, n a number of other uh, uh, brokers and uh, like apps, trading apps, um, blocked the ability to interact at all with certain with with certain stocks um and they explain why <clears throat> here we have robin hood ceo vlad tenev and he's with uh andrew cuomo and i have a couple of uh timestamps here i'm going to kind of click around here see if i could get to them um oh, oh, oh. oh it's not scrolling hold on there we go oh so he gets on with andrew cuomo he did an interview with cnbc but i really appreciate cuomo not kind of playing in terms of uh like he clearly is going the more aggressive route with them the cnbc interview was just like so what happened okay what are you gonna do well it sounds like you're in trouble uh so it's so i appreciate that this was not quite that angle uh <clears throat> and so here we go let me see let me give it a timestamp here this is a long video we're gonna watch it though not the whole thing we're gonna watch see where we at 327 It's buffering. It's buffering. Oh, it's 
Twitter why you do this. Hurt with a big shot. There we go. Okay. And that if they were benefiting from this, your small investors now Here believe that you wouldn't have shut down the game. And just one thing without getting in the weeds uh, here. You don't control the listing Actually, venue for GameStop. Now, I used to work in finance, so I know this stuff. But the audience doesn't need to. The New York Stock Exchange does. So if anybody was going to control the listing and shut it down, it should have been them. But it wasn't. It was you. Uh, and the reason that they do it is very limited. They do it because they think there's evidence of fraud or they think that there needs to be a material disclosure by the company that hasn't been made. And that's done to protect the investor. You check none of those boxes here because you don't control the venue. You didn't know about any information that GameStop or any of these other stocks needed to put out. You don't have any reason to believe there's fraud that you've articulated. And you're certainly not protecting these people who've been living the dream of making money, especially at the expense of the big guys. So why should people believe you did this for the right reasons? Well, we, we have no choice. We have to comply with all financial uh, requirements. And the SEC hasn't said you had to do this. Well, lots of brokers uh, have to uh, comply with these financial requirements and restrict and have issued restrictions on some of these names. Uh, and this is an industry-wide thing. You yourself met, mentioned that other brokers this week have imposed restrictions. And not speaking for other firms, but for Robinhood in particular, this isn't because there's, uh, you know, deals happening with market makers we route to or market participants. But These then why are... did you allow people to keep selling but not buying? The reason that is so trouble. That is the big fucking question. That is the big. Fu why? Why sell? But no buy. Troubling to people is that they were making money buying the stock because they were against the short side. And so by enabling them to sell but not buy, it sounds like you were allowing the hedge funds. And again, one of them owns a piece of you and they had a big short position. And that looks like a stinky conflict that you didn't come out straight on from conflict. the start. Address that. Well, not, none of that had anything to do with our decision to do this. Again, this was just looking at regulatory requirements, financial requirements, um, and we 100% will always protect our customers where the entire business is operating to empower individual investors and has been since its founding. And that's what Robinhood is committed to continue to do. So we, want, we don't want to restrict buying in these 13 stocks. Um, we're doing the best we can to re-enable it as long as it's operationally and, uh, and, and prudent from a deposit standpoint. So for you, it's about how much money is in the mix and what you can cover yourself? Well, it's, it's about us complying with. So he dances around this with his answer. What Cuomo is saying is you don't have enough money to cover the exchange of hands that shares are that's that's happening so when 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 things change hands they have to float this money basically in the middle until things get sold or covered or whatever and so what he's saying is that because the price continues to go up and we're gonna somebody else is actually gonna uh, sell it's a lot better than i have is that <clears throat> they're saying that they uh he's trying to imply that they have a liquidity issue where they cannot actually pay and cover the costs of this and so he doesn't want to say this because they want Robin Hood to have a healthy IPO when it goes public. And so coming out and saying, well, we can't really afford for people to actually use our platforms the way that they and we intended them to. That would be bad. The financial and clearinghouse deposits and regulations. Then you need, you know what you need? I'll give you some free advice. You need somebody who sets those requirements to come out and say that this is why this happened. Because otherwise... It smells bad, especially for a place called Robin Hood, to have Citadel Securities, your largest customer, investing $2.75 billion to bail out one of the biggest losers in the GameStop short. Um, you know, they both deny, you know, you, you and um, Citadel. So <clears throat> that's that's the gist right there. Woo! <laughs> oh, man. Where is that list of burn centers? Man, just... <clears throat> so... Uh, <laughs> that pretty much covers it. Like in terms of, 
in terms of an interview with with the person himself who m- made that decision, like there's no wiggle room there. What he said here is what you know, he's he's not trying to say that they don't have the money to cover. He's trying everything he can to not say they don't have the money to cover this stuff. Um, but we have Anthony Denier, maybe Denier, I'm not sure, uh, who is the CEO of Weeble, who was on a podcast here. And let me see, <clears throat> 430, and he breaks it down a little bit more. I would say honestly. The sheriff of Nottingham would have made a shitty app name. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you, Crab. And KOSS are so volatile. DTC has raised that requirement collateral rate to one hundred percent, meaning that for every single dollar that exchanges hands in those stocks. The clearing firm has to send for deposit for two whole business days that exact same amount of the notion of the trade. Now, when we're talking about GameStop at $250, $350, billions of shares trading, we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars that the clearing firm physically has to send in cash to the, to the to DTCC to hold there for two whole business days. And to be frank, the clearing firms are not that well capitalized. They can't do that. So in order to stop the clearing firm from going out of business, they stop the settlement of those shares, resulting in firms like Weeble not being able to allow customers to trade those stocks. Right? It's a market dynamic. And what, what like, what's going to happen if, if, if DTC doesn't move that, right? So we, we, you know, we want to blame DTC. We want to say DTC is the bad guy. They're raising requirements to 100%. Well, what happens if they don't do that? Then you have counterparty risk. So if I sold a share of GameStop to someone at $350 and that person was short and covered a short, say that person was Melvin Capital. Melvin Capital is now completely underwater. They don't have enough money to pay for that purchase to cover their short position. So, so, as the price continues to go up, all that money that's floating out there exponentially increases as these millions of trades are happening just on just on uh, GME stock. And so we even says here, let me see, what is this? Uh, 815, let me go here. He talks about what, what happens if a broker goes bust. He says blocking stuff on margin makes a little sense because uh, because of the risk, but not avail- not unavailable funds. Or we talk about uh, yeah. Capital caused some of this because of their issue, and then Citadel bails them out. Is there an argument of anything like that? Is that part of how this comes about, or would that be something that you couldn't you wouldn't know? I mean, it's kind of speculation where it really started, but certainly Melvin Capital's collapse had a big. A big play in this. Um, the ability for a big, a big firm to not be able to clear or match the other side of a trade has a has a trickle down effect. It then goes to the clearing firm, and then you have fears about the clearing firm not being able to uh, to settle that trade. So I think that's where it started. Yeah. Okay. And so. So TLDR, and, and and I think DZ here actually probably has a better idea of how this stuff works. But TLDR, if the broker can't cover the sale and then it goes up you end up going to you end up basically moving up the chain until you get to the banks so you've all this money and eventually get up to the point to where now you're hitting the banks and i mean not that it could be possible but fucking who knows uh but then you start getting to the point to where now we're having an actual entire market issue i actually had a uh i watched another video i don't have the link unfortunately but i had watched another video where somebody explicitly says that they would have had to shut down the whole market because of how much money was exchanging hands through fucking gamestop so it was the whole market that was being threatened by this and they were you know seconds away or whatever from getting to the point to where there were so many trades that are going on in GameStop that it could have actually had an impact on the entire market. <clears throat> you hear trickle down and ears automatically go off. Yeah, I think what he meant to say was trickle up. <laughs> so that was Andrew Bull. Or sorry, Andrew uh, Denier of uh, uh, Weeble. We- Weeble is a uh, Robin Hood like app. It's a, it's just, uh, it lets you uh, trade uh, stocks and cryptos, I believe. Um, so AOC gets on with um, uh, 
Alexis Goldstein, who is, a, and a number of other people, Alexis, and also Alexis, co-founder of Reddit, uh, and also uh, uh, the stock guy. And she did a stream, and it was it's a good stream. If you can sit down and watch it, it's a good one. Lots of good information. You can't get Doge on Weeble? Oh, okay, well, it's fucking F then. Um, so we, if we keep holding on more and more, they can just, they, they can't keep playing either. I mean, eventually you'll choke them out. Eventually, they'll, they'll, they're they'll going to get to the point to where the interest is more than what they're paying for the share itself. So they'll buy the share. And then the price is going to go up. Oh, it's fucking beautiful. So AOC gets on. Uh, she gets on Twitch. Because, you know, she's a streamer now. <laughs> and she, she starts the show. She gets in there with Melvin uh, Goldstein. And they start talking about Me Melvin Capitals. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Alexis Goldstein. Sorry. Uh, and they start talking about Melvin's. Uh, so capital, also what capital you're investors, Melvin Capital investors. Is that you've got Melvin Capital, right? Melvin Capital is the hedge fund that was shorting GameStop. They were the folks that were saying, "We're going to make a ton of money. Um, we're going to make a ton of money off of GameStop's stock going down." Wall Street right. bets comes in potentially with folks on Wall Street looking at what Wall Street Bets is doing to kind of supercharge this activity and say, you know what, we're going to make the stock go up, which would, of course, put Melvin Capital into an extraordinarily compromised position, which would essentially prompt them to get bailed out by one of the groups known as Citadel. Now, OK, so Citadel um, then swoops in as one of the actors to bail out Melvin Capital. and But Citadel's owner also co-founded a, a different Citadel. They're both connected, hence the same name by the same owner. They are two te technically different entities, though, but they are with the same founder. Right. So Citadel LLC is the parent company. Citadel Securities is the market maker that buys the Robinhood order flow. But the parent entity, Citadel LLC, is the one that swooped up Melvin Capital. And Congresswoman, I should just add, there were actually two um, Wall Street firms that bought Melvin Capital or rescued it, I should say. Citadel and um, and another one now I'm blanking, of course, on the name, but it's the new fund of Steve Cohen, who you may know as the owner of the New York Mets. Um, and all Steve right. Cohen, <laughs> and Steve Cohen is famous for Point all the wrong reasons. Is what the chat says. Yes. Point thank you. Thank you. Um, Steve Cohen is famous or infamous, I should say, because he used to have a hedge fund called SAC that uh, pled guilty to insider trading in 2013 mm. and had to shut itself down. And so, um, so this is the next generation of Steve all Cohen. Right. <laughs> 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 or infamous <laughs> oh damn it's just it's 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 the hands are everywhere it's everywhere right now everyone's involved so <clears throat> aoc like she said she wants to set up a um actually there is the other clip that i that i wanted to show you guys uh, what happens when a broker goes bust that's actually explained by alexis uh, alexis goldstein i should also note she used to work on wall street she's a computer programmer um and she used to uh or computer scientist or something like that but she used to write these algorithms and programs that would basically help help uh, uh these companies make trades faster and stuff like that so she's very familiar with this system i highly recommend you go and watch at least the first like 30 minutes of this stream i'll put the link in uh, because she goes over in detail exactly how robin hood is related to all these other companies and why things are looking pretty fucking sus right so let me go here to this is the eight uh what is it eight 1925 here we go we're paying our market maker for the order flow. So why do go. I bring all this up? I bring this all up to say, is Robinhood doing the best by their customers? Are these fintech companies that are so easy to use that lots of people are using to trade stocks, are they doing right by their customers? I think that's an important question that regulators should be asking right now. So let's talk a little bit about what happened today with the freeze that you saw, not just on Robinhood, but on, um, I believe, E-Trade, Wellbull, et cetera, where you have a lot of these retail, um, you know, these, these retail platforms um, all of a sudden putting a halt to some trades on not just GameStop, but some, so there were also there's also some activity, I believe, around AMC and other stocks that have been particularly Wellable. identified by um, 
by the subreddit Wall Street Bets. Tell me a little bit about what is going through your head when you see activity like that. Um, and you know, for folks at home, there are multiple possibilities here. You know, I think a lot of people sometimes want to jump to certain conclusions, but there. In, in order for us to really responsibly look at the situation, it does seem like there's more than one potential explanation, but I'm interested in hearing what's going through your head when you see that and what are some of the possibilities that could arise? So I just don't know why Robinhood made the decisions they did to stop trading, uh, allowing purchases of certain single name stocks today. Their decision was a little different than some of the other brokerages. So for example, so, so think of it from the point of view of the brokerage, right? Especially if people are selling stocks short, which has the potential for unlimited losses. Um, if your client goes bust and enough of your clients goes bust, then the brokerage goes bust. Mm -hmm. So what a different brokerage did, not Robinhood, but one called Interactive Brokers and some other brokers on the uh, that you know regular people use, is they just changed what's called their margin requirements. So if you wanted to buy a stock in some of these really active, volatile names today, you had to supply 100% cash margin. And what does that mean? You basically just had to front all of the money yourself, which might sound funny to people who don't trade stocks, but believe it or not, you can sometimes trade stocks with borrowed money. <laughs> um, so they're basically saying you can't borrow any money. You got to trade hard, cold, hard cash if you want to buy these stocks. So that's what I sort of would have expected to see from mm -hmm. everybody. Instead, what we saw is Robinhood just straight up saying you can't um, trade in any of these names. Now, I don't know that we know any more than that. Was, so, was there, you know, direction coming? So, you get the gist. This is this this is falling in line with. And she says, "I don't know. I don't know why they did that. I don't know if they said anything." So she didn't see the interviews yet. Um, a broker goes west. They know the rest of them. <laughs> They're doing right by one of the customers and themselves. Yeah, for reals. I. Uh, so there will be there will be a hearing the financial services committee has already put out that they are going to have a meeting on this and it says <clears throat> it says hedge funds have a long history of predatory conduct and the conduct is entirely indefensible private funds preying on the pension funds of hard-working americans must be stopped private funds engaging in predatory short selling and the detriment to the detriment of other investors must be stopped private funds engaging in vulture strategies that hurt workers must be stopped and so she says uh we must deal with the hedge funds whose unethical conduct directly led to the recent market volatility and we must examine the market in general and how it has been manipulated by hedge funds and their financial partners to benefit themselves while others pay the price and so they are going to have a hearing this is to to examine the recent activity uh, around GameStop. Uh, no date on this yet that I know of, um, but uh, real thing. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna get together and they're gonna sit down with some of these guys. We're probably we're probably gonna see a Zoom call with uh, with uh, 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 Victor or uh, Vlad Vlad Tenev of uh, Robinhood, Robinhood CEO, and. I mean, probably others, but I think that he's probably the core one strictly because, strictly because shady to offer them the ability to sell, but not to buy. So it looks like Citadel can pretty much control Apex clearing house. I can't figure out how deep it is, but Citadel would have told Apex to stop everything and the ripple effect of all brokers, which is a lot of newer brokerage companies that use Apex. When daddy says stop, <laughs> but it had nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. Nothing at all. Yeah, you give them a vaccine, you sit that fucker in the Capitol. <laughs> It'll be just be lawyers saying, don't answer that. That's that's what I worry about. Um, there's already been plenty of talks of uh, of class action lawsuits. Um, there's been class action lawsuits actually started already. Uh, there, was, there was an app that was already created that allows you to easily... Uh, sign up for a lawsuit, a class action lawsuit in a specific state, and they're open. They're going to try to make it so that you could do it for every state, uh, because that's what happens when you fuck with millennials. Uh, <laughs> they'll make an app for it, and they'll fucking fix it. Um, <clears throat> doesn't necessarily mean that people are going to get money out of the deal, but it does mean that someone's going to pay for it if it continues to go through and it's successful. Uh, Teddy tells you get out of it you want, considering the context of the situation. We know which side of there getting the better deal when the normies can't buy. 
they sold my wife's stock without her permission. I'm down for that class action lawsuit. Yes. So if you if you had money that was like instantly granted to you by um by uh, Robinhood, which they do, if you put in like a you know two thousand dollars, they'll be like, you have a thousand dollars you can spend right now, and you have to wait for the other thousand to clear. Um, that money. And and this is and this is this is what I've read. Um, the money you spend on that is technically Robin Hood's. So if you buy Game Stocks, Game Stonks, um, then yes, they could close you out early. Um, now I've seen that being reported a number of times. I can't. I I didn't. I didn't say. It. I didn't put it in the news strictly because I couldn't find a good article that was like firm heart, you know, firm proof that it was happening. But I have a feeling that. At this FSC meeting, we're gonna get we're gonna get a lot of information of what actually happened, and we're probably gonna learn a lot more about um about you know how fucked up all this happened. Or or they're just gonna plead the fifth or whatever. Just be like, oh well, don't answer that. You don't have to answer that. Oh, we'll have to look into that and get back to you. Oh, we'll have to look at look into that and get back to you. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Clash of the lawsuits really only benefit a handful of named clients and the firms that represent both sides. It's more often than uh, not worth the paperwork to join a California. Yeah, that's true. The class action lawsuits definitely don't benefit the person. Like you get like a check. One time I got a lawsuit for um, I think I got it like a check for fuck I don't even know like dollars like dollars for something. I was like oh yeah I just sent a postcard back or something. That was it. <sighs> Some poor young snob is gonna take the fall for the old greedy bastards. Yeah, I I hope to God hope to God. Somebody, somebody, somewhere pays for this. But in the meantime, continue to hold. <laughs> in the meantime, if you are, if you're, if you're holding through this week, just continue to hold. There's no, that's just, just as fun. Meanwhile, while all this shit was happening, Dogecoin starts going up. So I told my wife, I said, um, early this week, I said, there's a lot of people that are getting involved with with uh, GameStop stock. And what I think is going to happen is people are going to move that into other stocks once those things, once they cash out on those. I actually thought people were going to cash out. Um, like, get to a certain point and cash out. Shit, I cashed out. Um, I, ca I fucking hardly make anything. <laughs> but still, I still cashed out. Um, but people are holding. But some folks definitely are involved now, and they're using like robin hood and such uh and robin has robin has easy access to crypto so i was like i think crypto is gonna go up right i think crypto's gonna go up now bitcoin hasn't moved that much but you know what has on the dodge coin army hey all you cool cats and kittens on the dodge coin army it's carol baskin from big cat rescue there is so much going on for Dogecoin right now. Oh my goodness. Check out all of the news and be sure and do all of your own research on this. And if you like what you see at Dogecoin, then donate to hashtag Dogecoin to help animals if you can. <laughs> this dropped 3.15 p.m. January 27, 2021. Within hours, Doge stock started to move and move fast. It shot up past Dogecoin. <laughs> started, to, it shot up slightly overnight. Overnight, it was like 1.3 cents. I and mean, we're seriously talking about like fractions of a penny initially. Shot up 1.3 cents, 1.4 cents, something like that. And I was excited because I had some, man, I had 42,000 Doge coin. Uh, and we just saw an insane rally around it. It says the Reddit frenzy has sent Doge coin, a cryptocurrency, started as a joke up 800%. 800%! It says they're trying to push Doge to $1. Right now it's at 71 cents. Before it hit 71 cents, it was chilling around like 30 something, 30, 40 cents. Just kind of cruising around there. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Three cents. I, sorry. The, I, I, I moved the decimal point. Three cents. <laughs> 7.1 cents. Uh, so yes, it, before it was sort of like three to four cents. Um, and everybody was like trying so hard to get just Elon, please, 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 please. 
tweet about it. And Elon Musk tweets this. And that's all that needed to be said. From this point, he didn't necessarily create another huge uh, jump, but he definitely didn't hurt it. It just continued. It can, it was just something else to keep people throwing money in, and it kept on fucking climbing. Trading sites started to break down. Not stop them. Not stop people from trading. Right? Crypto sites, coin sites, wallets started to break down. Binance will be suspending withdrawals temporarily in order to address large increase in requests from new unique users. Rest assured funds are safe. They're safe. Uh, and we apologize for any inconveniences caused. Updates to follow. This has since been resolved. What else? Robinhood. Oh, sorry. Coinbase. Coinbase also broke down. So due to technical issue, we're experiencing degraded service where some trades may not be able to be completed. Our team is working to quickly restore service back to normal. We'll send another update soon. Thank you for your patience. Elon doesn't have a bone to pick using Doge. Say we have seen some of the stuff Elon said I uh, said on the WC Discord channel. Oh, I haven't. I have not seen some of the stuff he said. Um, I'm in that channel, but boy, is it a mess. <laughs> I'm in that Discord. And it's just impossible to possible track anything. Uh, is digital crypto on fidelity? I know. Gosh. Well, there's other ways to buy to buy crypto. You could use one of these, you know, a million sites. The problem is that because the hype was getting so huge for fucking Dogecoin, uh, it started to blow up. It started to blow up, and so <clears throat> even Robinhood. It says Robinhood restricted uh, crypto trading due to extraordinary market conditions. This is tied into the the way that their system works where when you sign up for a new account and you put money in they'll grant you some of that money immediately kind of thing so even though it hasn't cleared yet so because as we know as we can assume they're having an issue with money they don't want to say it but all signs point to you broke um because of that they cut off people from buying uh, buying crypto for a minute. Now, this didn't last long. I didn't. I don't think this lasted very long at all. This particular issue, but it, it's just another thing to add to the multitude of shit that was happening this week to everything. Um, yes, Doge did skyrocket. Yes, I cashed out. Yes, I made a good amount of money. It wasn't a ton, but it was a good amount of money. Uh, yes, I rolled that bitch right over to Bitcoin, and it's gonna sit there. <laughs> it's just gonna sit there because Bitcoin's reliable. It's going to reliably do nothing <laughs> until, until everybody cashes out of game stock. And then, or sorry, yeah, yeah, and then, then it'll go up. Fingers crossed. Bitcoin, stable coin. It is. It's, it's the, uh, it's the, I mean, it's not even the Tesla of, of, uh, of, uh, cryptocurrency because even Tesla goes up. <laughs> it's more stable than the U S dollar. It is, it is stable. It is unbelievably stable for what it is for something that is crypto Oop. so it's friday Shh. sorry it's friday and the headlines are rolling in gamestop rally refuses to die as robin hood restores trading yes they restored trade now that you've seen that i could go and do this yes they've restored trading you could only buy a handful at a time or a handful period they were they were throttling how much you could buy they're they're trying to get around not having a buy button and instead they are uh finding other ways to still throttle people what is this jamie shorts are going to try to push the price down pretty hard right before closing to make calls expire uh otm the gamma squeeze won't happen until after today's close yes so um yeah, so the short squeeze I have to have to get to after this pushes some serious price up to serious margin call levels. Basically, you can look like this: calls get exercised and prices go up over the weekend. Brokers start sweating over the weekend. They margin call the shorters first thing Monday and get them one or two days to cover. This will drive the price up even more. Exactly. So that's when they talk about has the squeeze squoes. The squeeze has not been squoes because. The shares from these short sellers have not been, the inventory has not moved. So this is now a, this is now a standoff between everybody 
between everybody that is involved in this. Some of them is for personal reasons. Some of them is for is just because they want chaos or whatever. Um, probably few, <laughs> and others because they want to make money. Uh, it's a standoff, and what I thought would end this week, as of last week, it seems clear that it's going to go through probably a good chunk of next week. Because, I mean, like I just read, as these brokers start trying to pressure and close out the positions and they're paying interest on all this stuff, as they're trying to cash out on this stuff and get out before they end up infinitely losing more money, because if one firm does a million shares, then the price goes up. Now the other firm has to pay that new price. And so it becomes this game of like, who's going to pull the trigger first? There's only so many that have such a huge standing in this that they can that they're going to lose a, you know trillion dollars but the the limit the, what's I call a gamma squeeze like the limit is basically non-existent that after Thursday I was pretty sure Friday was D-Day anyway yeah I thought I thought Friday was D-Day as well and then turns out it turns out uh it closed and it stayed up it closed at 325 at 4 p.m. guns <laughs> and I'm just in awe. I seriously sat here looking at this. Like I, I, I was like, I was expecting, I was like, surely we're going to see a sell off where people who are not in this, like, they're like, you know what? I can't do this. Like, I just want, I just want to get some money. It's going to crash. Something like that. I got to get out and whatever. Like they fucking held, they fucking held. Uh, with after I was training, now it's at three sixteen. Yeah, it's it's probably not going to move that much. Um, yeah, it's I was just I was just in shock uh, that they have managed to, or they they decided they're going to hold, it. and that's what makes me now I I firmly believe when you see like random posts from people being dramatic, like oh my parents lost this and whatever, like you know that shit happened, but you don't know if this person just tugging at your heartstrings trying to make you believe, you know. I'm sure a lot of you guys are skeptical just like I am. It's like, oh, God, drugs, sob story. Probably not even your story. Probably just made this shit up, whatever. But, like, after seeing this, like, I fucking believe, dude. Like, I totally believe the the the, the balls. Yes, brutality. The balls on these people, they are... <laughs> they are the theoretical balls. Like, just the fact that they're, like, they're not, they're not going to budge. They're not going to budge. The stocks move too quickly now for it to last this long. But I imagine if this, the hard balls, this for, uh, imagine if this pushed through the earn, through earnings call. GME always sucks at earnings, but we we would be like, we don't care about your shit, Shibi. It's not about that pie. It's not about that. Yep. Reddit uh, 316 says, I just stonked your ass. It's, it's fucking, yeah, it's amazing. It really is amazing. There are some peripheral stocks that people are eyeballing as being the next thing. Um, one of them is there's like Nokia. There's I think it was Best Buy maybe, uh, and then there's uh, AMC. AMC is a big one that I think a lot of people are pushing. And under full disclosure, I have some AMC, of course. Um, and I don't know if that's going to do anything, but they did get nine hundred million dollars to get them through the uh, uh, to get them through the rest of the pandemic. So. I felt like, you know what, mm, even if nothing happens, people will eventually, oh, Blackberry, sorry, uh, people will eventually go back to the movies. So maybe it's a good long-term investment, please. <laughs> but yeah, there are peripheral stocks that are moving and that are higher than they should be strictly because there's hype. AMC was trading on January 26th at $4.60, and now it's at $13. Three days ago, it was at fucking four dollars, three, four dollars. Crazy, just crazy. So all my friends have been texting me to buy into crypto. These are people that would never get into crypto. Yes, yes. And so let me let me just say this again. If you decide to get involved in this, yes, I tweeted out Dogecoin shit, and and that night a bunch of people bought in, and then hopefully they cashed out, or they're they're still holding on to it, it's fine, whatever. They got in at ten cents, or sorry, one cent, and it's sitting at five cents. Um, and so they told me that they made money, and I think that's great. I think that's great. I am not a financial advisor, okay? I lose in this shit. Like I said before the stream, 
I swear, every time I buy into something, that shit goes down. And it'll happen to you too. And then you'll panic, and you'll be like, oh my god, I have to pull my money out before it disappears. Okay? You'll panic, and you'll pull it out, and you make dumb decisions, and I've done that too. I've lost hundreds of dollars because I panic, and I, and I, just, I just pull my stock. Because I would pull my money out because I was afraid I was going to lose more. Only put in what you can throw away. Like money that you can just forget exists. Like I said before, the stream. Hiding a $100 bill around the house. So that way I can, or around the apartment. So that way I can have, have some money one day. Like that kind of shit. Put money in that you can't afford to just forget exists. Because it's possible that you could lose it. It's 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 gambling. They don't want to call it a casino, but I mean, as someone who grew up around casinos, I'm telling you, it's basically a casino. And the house is, in this case, the hedge fund managers and the hedge funds and the people who are making the rules and changing the rules as we go. That's the house, and so you're betting against them. The house usually always wins, so you got to be careful. Please be careful. This is rich person gambling. Yeah, I mean, people said it threw in like $10 and they walked away with, you know, 50 bucks. And they were like, that's cool. It's like, great. That's great. You can like cash out 50 bucks. It's more than you had. 24 hours is great. Wall Street out of the car counters just saying, yeah, huh. The famous quote, hedge funds do. I, I Thank you so much, Serene. Hedge funds do what should be illegal until it is illegal. That's right. They find things that are, that should be illegal and they do it until it is. That's exactly the quote that, yes, thank you. I wish I had written that down. So, that's it for the news, folks. Thank you so much for watching. That's up for GameStop. I guess next week, if things still happen, we'll check in and we'll do it again. It is the biggest news <laughs> that's happening. I'm sure you guys can't get away from your timelines. It's insane. Insane. Buy Doge. Buy Doge. Buy crypto. Buy AMC. <laughs> GME. Watch it, though. Like, even if you're not invested, watch it. Don't get FOMO. Okay. Yes, it sucks you didn't get in. Yes, I wish I didn't sell too. All right, you'll get over it. At least pull up some, get some popcorn and watch the action Monday morning. Monday morning, I the market's gonna do this shit. It's gonna get crazy. The GME and all these other are gonna get fucking crazy. It's not gonna. We're not gonna open and then it's gonna cruise. It's not gonna be like, well, it's a nice, it's a regular trading day. Nah, it's just gonna go fucking wild on Monday, Tuesday. And probably throughout some most of next week. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike B. Sunday. This Sunday. <laughs> and chat. Thank you so much, chat. You guys are the best. Some of you guys, especially DZ, thank you so much for the info. Appreciate that. See you guys later. Bye.